All right, so this is my next project that I'm working on. Um, I wanted to have a Narcissus escape ship from Alien, from the Nostromo. And I, most of the models I saw out there weren't really impressive to me. So I decided to print my own uh, with my 3D printer. So you can see how big this is. Here's my hand. So this is a pretty good size model that I printed up. You can see all the detail. Um, the file is way detailed, beautiful detailed file. I'm going to go through this really slow so you can see all the detail. And um, the resolution on my printer is really, 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 really good. And you all know me that when I print something or when I, I'm, I'm sorry, when I work on something, I like to make it look distressed and not all nice and pretty and new, which I'm not going to do uh, with this. I'm going to um, you know, put a couple of coats of primer on it just to seal everything in. But... Um, I'm going to make it uh, light up and, uh, you know, paint it real nice and pretty, make the, make the engines light up, make the cockpit light up, all that kind of stuff. Um, here's the other side of it. As you can see, it's, it's, the print came out really, really nice. I'm very, very happy with the print. There's very little cleanup to do to this print, very little sanding to do. And if you look really close, you can see how tight my resolution is on my printer. It's like ridiculous. See all that detail? I mean, there's there's a little bit of cleanup, but hardly anything there. And again, I want it to look distressed, so I may just leave some of this stuff in here. I haven't really decided yet, to be honest with you. So when I do uh, prints, like on something I want to light up and everything else, um, I have to do it in such a way that I can separate it and then I can drill out the areas that I'm going to do the lighting and everything else. So when I printed this, I printed it in two pieces and I used a zigzag for the infill. Um, I like this infill. I think this infill is a good infill to use. Um, the supports that I use when I print this are the tree supports. Um, I know a lot of people use the normal supports. Um, the problem with the normal supports for me is breaking it away. It's real hard to do, and sometimes it's really, really hard to separate from your print and your support. And I use tree. As I said, tree, you can see the difference in the print, so you know where your supports are. And tree is a uh, breaks away really well, but it also supports really, really, really well. And I'm I again for me, I'm a tree guy. You know, you guys do what you want to do, but I use tree. And like I said, the infill that I use is the zigzag infill. There's all different kinds of infills you can use, but I like this. And I stay with pretty much two or three settings. I don't really uh, do anything super hard. Um, if if there's going to be a lot of detail, I'm not in a hurry for the print. I'll reduce the printing speed so it's less. Um, but, you know, I pretty much am happy with just general settings that I have. And they work for me every single time I want to do something. Um, there um, are people who don't like some of the supports because they use more material. I guess if you had a business doing this, you might consider that a big deal. For me, I'm just a regular hobby guy, so it's not a big deal to me. Now, the print took about four, four days, three and a half days to print, something like that, so it wasn't too bad. So if you look here, you've got the infill. I can cut into any of this stuff, run my wires, don't have a problem. Here's the front of it. Actually, that's upside down, but it doesn't matter. Let me, let me get this over. Hold on a second. Come here, Sparky. All right, so there's the front of it. Maybe. No, that's not the front. <laughs> that's the front. Because i got to build the windshield and all that stuff right there. Yeah, so that's the front. So that's where the windshield's going to go. So, and I, I probably will put a lighted windshield and all that stuff in it, too. Anyway, so um, I just wanted to show this, guys. It's fresh off the printer. I just started breaking off uh, a lot of the uh, the supports, and I think it looks pretty decent. And here's what it looks like from underneath. So, again, not much cleanup. I can, you know, take my Dremel and break all that up and run my wires and my lights in there, make it look all pretty. Anyway, I just thought you guys would get a big kick out of this. Um, I'm back, so I'll be posting more things on my channel. Um, as you all know, I'm a biomedical engineer by trade, which means that I take care of all the electronic patient care equipment in the hospital, from handheld thermometers to the heart-lung machines, anesthesia machines, 
um, balloon pumps, uh, big robots, anything in open heart surgery, ICU, CCU, CVU, ER, uh, telemetry floors. I do all the radios, um, all the monitoring, all that stuff. Um, and with COVID, we've been really, 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 really busy, um, to say the least. And uh, things are slowing down a little bit, but um, it's still really, really busy. And it took up a lot of my time, a lot of my time. Um, but I'm back, and a lot of people have requested for me to do some more modeling. Um, I just, again, the last video I did was the, uh, the attacker from uh, Independence Day, my four-foot attacker. That came out really, really good. Who knows, maybe with this, I might build an undercarriage at an Nostromo so that I can support this underneath and give it some kind of a display um, type of situation with that. I think that would look really cool just to have the under support where this thing slides in into the Nostromo and just cut away that portion of the Nostromo. Let me know what you guys think, all right? All right, talk to you later. Bye.